Are you having trouble with creating realistic interior renders in Lumion? In this video, I'll show you how to improve your render with just one click. True story. And I'll also show you how to create lighting effects like this. Let's get started. Lumion has reworked their whole rendering engine by merging the previous rasterization technology with the brand new ray tracing technique. To demonstrate it, I will use this new example scene. Now let's go to the photo mode and click on this camera view. You can see that this view already has effects applied to it. And this is how it looks when we render it. Now to use the ray tracing effect, you can find it here in the feature effects or in the lighting tab. When using the ray tracing effect, Lumion will disable effects such as skylight, reflection, shadow, hyperlight, and global illumination. This is because the ray tracing effect will take care of all of those aspects in a better and a more accurate way. And as you can see, with the new ray tracing effect, your render looks way more realistic because ray tracing produces better indirect lighting. Not only that, but we can now achieve realistic reflections on any metal surface and also have better contact shadows. The difference is even more prominent with scenes where there is not much direct sunlight. For example, here I have a scene with a bunch of effects already set for this photo, but as you can see, it looks a bit fake. The main reason is because the rasterization technique doesn't do well with indirect lighting. And you can see that we don't have a big direct light source here, besides the small window and the two light wells in the ceiling. But now if I add the ray tracing effect and render it, and with just one click, the lighting looks way more realistic now. This changes everything. I know. <laughs> right? When you first add the ray tracing effect, it is at a low setting by default, so it is very fast to create render previews. However, there are several settings that you can use to control the final result. The first slider is number of samples, which lets you control the number of rays shot from the virtual camera. Here is the comparison between the two images, one with 16 samples and one with 512 samples. You can see that the higher the number of samples, the better the quality of the render, but it also takes longer to render. You can even go up to 2048 samples if you would like, or if you have time, but I usually set mine to 512. The next slider is to control the number of bounces, which determines how many times each of the samples will bounce. Here is a comparison between two images, one with two bounces and the other one with eight bounces per sample. The higher the number of bounces, the more accurate the lighting will be. Next is the denoiser toggle, which controls the rendering artifacts in the final image. When the toggle is active, the denoiser will remove any noise from the image. But sometimes, under the right lighting conditions, and with enough samples, you may not need to use the denoiser at all. However, Lumion does a very good job at denoising, so for the most part, I will leave it turned on. When the denoiser is turned on, you also get another slider called Firefly Reduction, which tells Lumion to blend the brightest pixels on the screen and decrease the amount of fireflies. For most of my scenes, it doesn't make a big difference, but I usually set mine to 50%. When working with ray tracing, I often like to add a color correction effect, which is located in the Enhancement tab, or you can also use the new search bar to find it. The color correction effect now has a new feature, which is the histogram on the very top. This is extremely useful when adjusting the exposure of the render. There's also an auto exposure toggle that you can turn off if you like. On the top right corner of the histogram is a button for highlight clipping. When it's clicked, it will show the overexposed areas in red. Now you can easily see where the highlight burns are and you can adjust the exposure accordingly. On the other end is the shadow clipping, which will show the areas that are underexposed in blue. When using this feature with ray tracing, it will be more accurate if you generate a preview of the render. And after I'm done, I can click these buttons again to turn off the highlights and shadow clipping. And then I can make more adjustments if I like. In this case, I will change the temperature and tint a bit to make the scene look warmer. And there we go, with some quick work, we were able to go from this to this. Pretty cool, huh? Currently, there are some limitations with the ray tracing feature, such as it doesn't support vegetation, so I would recommend using ray tracing more for the interior. Note that this is only the first time that we've seen ray tracing in Lumion, so it will only get better from here. This effect will be expanded and improved during upcoming releases of Lumion through the new updater, 
which will let you update Lumion without having to download a completely new version, which means we will now have more frequent updates. With the new ray tracing feature in Lumion 2023, emissive materials now also emits light and create shadows. Here I have a scene which I want to create a night render. On the ceiling of this scene, I have a very unique shape lamp, which I can make emissive using this slider here. When we go back to the photo mode, you will see that our scene is already lit up by the emissive material on the lights fixture. This is not possible in the previous version of Lumion because if we turn off ray tracing, you will see that it only glows but it doesn't emit any light onto the surrounding area. However, note that the build mode still only shows the rasterization mode, but this is not a big issue. I've always wanted to render this scene in Lumion because it has so many objects emitting light. But it wasn't possible until this version because only with ray tracing, it is now possible to create effects such as this neon sign where the emissive material is not facing the camera. Also in Lumion 2023, moving and rotating objects is so much easier because we have a new transform gizmo functionality. This new feature helped me place these line lights with ease. Also, if you've noticed, instead of having to tweak so many different effects to create a realistic render, now it's possible to achieve realism using just only two effects. That is crazy. The emissive property is only one of the many things relating to materials that were updated in Lumion 2023. The material system has also been reworked to integrate a full PBR or physically based rendering workflow. You can now import many types of PBR maps, making it very easy to create realistic materials in Lumia. I will cover these material tips and tricks in a more detailed video in the future because there are a lot to unpack here. It's also important to note that if you are not able to use the ray tracing effect, the rasterization engine has also been updated to work a lot better in Lumion 2023, so your old scenes will look better automatically. If you want to check out the complete list of the new updates and changes in Lumion 2023, you can check the link in the description box below. And check out this playlist for more Lumion tutorials. That's all for today, stay inspired guys and I will see you next time.